Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into Dollars and Cents, a compelling exploration of the often irrational ways we think about and spend our money. Written by Dan Ariely, a renowned professor of psychology and behavioral economics at Duke University, and Jeff Chrysler, a Princeton educated former lawyer and satirist, this book sheds light on why we're prone to making poor financial decisions, how our spending habits reflect our human nature and what we can do to become more rational consumers and savers. Drawing from Ariely's extensive research, frequently featured in scholarly journals and major publications such as the New York Times and Washington Post, paired with Chrysler's expertise in using humor to dissect complex economic behaviors, Dollars and Cents offers a unique blend of insight and practical advice. Together, they tackle the unconscious motivations behind our spending habits providing readers with strategies to overcome these pitfalls and improve their relationship with money. Whether you're someone who finds it hard to stick to a budget, a bargain hunter always on the lookout for the best deal, or a young person considering how to start saving effectively, Dollars and Cents is a must-listen that promises to change how you perceive and use your hard-earned money. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of monetary misbehavior and learn to make more thoughtful and beneficial financial decisions. Dollars and Cents. How we misthink money and how to spend smarter. Introduction. Unlock the secrets to smarter money management. Let's face it, the dance with dollars is often more of a stumble for most of us. If you've ever looked at your savings account with a sigh, you're in good company. The path to financial wisdom is riddled with human quirks and the peculiar nature of money itself. But here's the silver lining. Understanding the crux of these money mishaps can be the first step towards better financial habits. The journey towards smarter spending isn't devoid of lessons and insights. Among these, you'll discover why a retail giant like J.C. Penney learned the hard way that transparency and pricing might not always play in their favor. It throws light on an intriguing aspect of consumer psychology, our complex relationship with prices and value perception. Furthermore, dive into the intriguing realms of mental and emotional accounting. These concepts reveal the internal ledgers we maintain that often lead us astray from making sound financial decisions. It's a fascinating look into how our brains categorize and prioritize money sometimes to our detriment. Lastly, explore the wonders of a Ulysses contract, a strategy named after the ancient Greek hero that could be your ticket to bolstering your savings. It's about making commitments in a moment of clarity, to safeguard against the allure of temptation later on, a tactic that could significantly impact your financial future. So, If you've ever felt bewildered by your spending habits or wondered why saving seems so arduous, take heart. We're about to delve into the reasons behind these challenges, not to bemoan our lot, but to empower ourselves with the knowledge to transcend them. With these insights, the road to financial savvy becomes less daunting and more navigable. Part 1. The Art of Smart Spending. Understanding Opportunity Costs and Value Cues. In the dynamic dance of consumerism, where every dollar holds the promise of countless possibilities, understanding the abstract nature of money is crucial. It's a tool, a medium enabling exchanges, but its value is not static. It's as fluctuating as the tides, anchored in the collective agreement of its worth. Yet what remains constant is its pervasive role in the myriad aspects of daily life. Despite this awareness, there exists a paradox in our handling of money, a propensity for irrational spending that seems to defy logic. The crux of such financial folly, a heady mix of neglecting the unseen alternatives and placing undue trust in misleading markers of value. Take the concept of opportunity costs, an economic principle highlighting the hidden trade-offs behind every purchase. When you spend money on one item, you're inherently forgoing a multitude of other potential buys. Yet this crucial consideration often escapes us in the heat of the shopping moment. The story of customers at a car dealership 
recounted by author Dan Ariely, illuminates this blind spot beautifully. Faced with the question of what they were foregoing to purchase a new vehicle, many drew a blank, unable to see beyond the immediate acquisition to the broader specter of missed opportunities, be it a dream vacation or indulgent dining experiences. This insight peels back a layer of consumer psychology, revealing a common oversight, the difficulty in recognizing the full spectrum of what we sacrifice with our financial choices. Equally deceptive is our reliance on value cues, those external signals that supposedly guide us to the worth of an item. In an ideal world, assessing an object's value would be a rational process, a balancing act weighing one potential purchase against another. However, reality paints a different picture, one where limited time offers and exclusive deals cloud our judgment, pushing us towards hasty decisions under the guise of securing a bargain. Car dealerships serve as a prime example, where the air is thick with the persuasive language of salespeople, each phrase a carefully crafted value cue designed to propel you towards signing on the dotted line. While not all value cues are inherently misleading, the unfortunate truth is that they are often employed as tools of manipulation, steering consumers away from making informed decisions based on true value. Understanding these two pivotal forces, the overlooked importance of opportunity costs and the misleading allure of value cues, unlocks a deeper comprehension of our spending habits. It's a stepping stone towards cultivating a more mindful approach to money where each decision is informed by a broader perspective and a clearer understanding of value beyond the superficial signals that vie for our attention. Part two, the puzzle of value, navigating the maze without visible cues. The price tags dangling from the vast array of items we encounter daily, be it cars whizzing past or homes lining the streets, often remain enigmatic, shrouded in the mystery of their true worth. How does one discern the value of seemingly mundane things from a pair of sneakers to a lavish mansion? It's a tricky endeavor, with numerous factors like material costs, craftsmanship, and logistical expenses lurking beneath the surface. In this complex web of valuation, we instinctively reach for mental shortcuts to make sense of it all, leaning heavily on comparison shopping as our compass. Pitting one item against another seems like a rational strategy to gauge relative value, Yet this approach is riddled with pitfalls that can skew our perception of a good deal. The saga of J.C. Penney, under the brief stewardship of CEO Ron Johnson in 2012, underscores the profound impact of value cues on consumer satisfaction. Historically, the department store thrived on a strategy of marking up prices only to slash them with discounts and sales, creating the illusion of unbeatable bargains. Johnson's revolutionary fair and square pricing model, which scrubbed away these discounts in favor of straightforward lower prices aimed to cut through the charade. However, this bold move backfired spectacularly. Lacking the psychological thrill of snagging a perceived deal, customers turned their backs on J.C. Penney, culminating in a staggering $985 million loss and Johnson's departure from the company. This tale is a testament to the critical role of value cues, not just in enticing purchases, but in crafting the consumer's emotional experience of value itself. Yet, the phenomenon of self-deception in value assessment isn't confined to the shopping arena. Brian Wansink's experiment, detailed in his book Mindless Eating, offers a fascinating glimpse into how external cues dictate our actions in unexpected ways. By surreptitiously refilling soup bowls, one sink observed that the physical indicator of an empty bowl, rather than internal signals of satiety, determined when individuals felt they had eaten enough. This finding puts a spotlight on our reliance on concrete cues to navigate decisions large and small. The interplay between invisible value and its outward signals invites us to ponder the complexity of our decision making processes. In a world where definitive cues often guide our interpretations and actions, understanding their influence can empower us to navigate the market's waters more skillfully, wary of the currents but better equipped to seek the true value lying beneath the surface. Part 3. 
the intricacies of mental and emotional accounting in financial decisions. Picture this, you're en route to an eagerly awaited concert, precious dollar 100 ticket in hand, when a gust of wind whisks it out the window. Faced with the option to repurchase the ticket for the same price, would you? Alternatively, suppose it was a $100 bill that met a windy fate instead. Would you still proceed to buy the concert ticket? These scenarios lay bare the peculiarities of what's known as mental accounting, a concept crucial in the fabric of our decision-making processes. It's a mental gymnastics routine where we assign subjective values and categories to our finances. And these assignments greatly influence how we perceive and spend money. The disparity in our willingness to repurchase a lost ticket versus drawing another $100 for a new ticket stems from mental accounting. The initial ticket purchase falls into an already spent mental category, making the loss feel like a sunk cost. Conversely, the lost $100 bill hadn't yet been earmarked for anything specific, leaving us more inclined to replace it and proceed with our purchase. This nuance suggests that while mental accounting can often lead us down irrational paths, it remains a fixture in our financial psyche for a reason. At its core, mental accounting serves as a cognitive shortcut, striving to simplify the daunting plethora of spending choices we face daily. Imagining dissecting every purchase Weighing each against endless possible alternatives is not only impractical, it's paralyzing. Thus, mental accounting with all its quirks emerges as a pragmatic approach to navigating our financial world, albeit an imperfect one. Equally compelling is the concept of emotional accounting, which delves into the emotional investments we make in our financial decisions. Money isn't just a currency to us, it's often steeped in emotions influenced by its source and our relationships to those sources. Receiving money from a disliked family member, for instance, may spur a desire to dissociate from those negative feelings, perhaps through charitable donations or impulsive spending, attempting to cleanse the money. Both mental and emotional accounting illustrate that our financial choices are far from purely logical. They're intertwined with our interpretations, emotions, and the subjective categories we place our money into. Recognizing these biases doesn't just offer insight into our sometimes inexplicable financial behaviors. It also hints at strategies to mitigate their more irrational tendencies. Ultimately, the goal is to reach a point where, upon receiving an unexpected windfall, we can bypass these mental hurdles and direct our finances towards more prudent avenues like saving. Part 4 the power of words and rituals in shaping value. The delicate dance of persuasion often begins with a simple twist of language or the introduction of a ritual, turning mundane moments into experiences brimming with perceived value. Consider the realm of feeding a toddler, where a spoon becomes an airplane, transforming the task into a playful engagement. This scenario underscores a profound truth. The way we talk about and interact with the world can significantly shape our perceptions and experiences. Take, for instance, the framing of financial scenarios. Would the prospect of living on 20% less of your current salary unsettle you more than living off 80%? Despite representing the same reality, a study published in the Journal of Consumer Research in 1988 revealed that people showed a markedly higher comfort level with the latter phrasing. Here, Mere linguistic framing can tilt the scales of our comfort and decision-making. The restaurant industry, with its mastery over consumption vocabulary, offers a prime example of how language elevates the ordinary into the realm of the exquisite. A bottle of wine described with an array of sophisticated adjectives, emphasizing its complex and earthy notes, can suddenly warrant a price tag far beyond its grocery shelf counterpart. Terms like bouquet or artisan possess a magical inflationary power on our willingness to spend, illustrating the intricate link between word choice and perceived value. Yet, it's crucial to approach such linguistic embellishments with a discerning eye, recognizing the difference between genuine quality and skillful marketing. Beyond the realm of language lies the transformative potential of rituals in enhancing the value of experiences. The ceremonial aspects of wine tasting, Pouring, swirling, smelling, 
and finally tasting, infuse the experience with a sense of occasion and gravity. This ritualistic approach to consumption extends far beyond wine, touching on various aspects of our daily lives, from the food we eat to the products we enjoy. A compelling study conducted by researchers from the University of Minnesota and Harvard Business School in 2013 delved into the impact of ritualized consumption. Participants who engaged in a slow, deliberate process of unwrapping and savoring a chocolate bar were found to value it more highly than those who consumed it hastily. This revelation underscores the intrinsic link between the rituals we create around consumption and our perception of value. In essence, the narratives we construct through words and actions around our experiences play a pivotal role in shaping our perception of their worth. By understanding and critically examining the influence of language and rituals, we can become more adept at discerning true value and appreciating the richness of our encounters with the world around us. Part 5. Mastering Self-Control, Your Key to Financial Wisdom In the realm of personal finance, where temptation lurks around every corner, mastering self-control stands as the ultimate challenge. Despite a plethora of budgeting tips and financial strategies available at our fingertips, none can substitute the power of self-discipline. Without it, we're like ships without rudders, drifting aimlessly into the sea of poor financial choices. One potent strategy to fortify your self-control involves forging a strong emotional bond with your future self. It's easy to disregard the well-being of this distant, nebulous entity when immediate gratifications, like an enticing pint of ice cream while binge-watching your favorite series, beckon. However, by envisaging a dialogue or penning a heartfelt letter to the future you, this connection becomes more tangible. Imagine the smile on your future self's face, enjoying a serene retirement, all thanks to the prudent financial decisions you're making today. This mental exercise not only brings the future closer, but infuses it with emotional stakes, making it harder to ignore. Moreover, specificity holds power. A study featured in Management Science in 2005 unearthed a fascinating insight. We're more inclined to save diligently if we earmark funds for a concrete retirement date rather than a vague future. Setting sights on a specific calendar date, such as August 23, 2048, transforms an abstract goal into a tangible milestone, providing a clear target for our savings efforts. Another invaluable tool in the quest for self control is the establishment of Ulysses contracts, a concept inspired by ancient mythology. Just as Ulysses safeguarded his journey by having himself bound away from the siren's deadly allure, we too can employ mechanisms to steer clear from financial temptations. For those who find credit cards irresistible, transitioning to prepaid debit cards can be a game changer. Similarly, automating savings directly from each paycheck can effectively earmark funds for future needs before temptations arise. A striking revelation from a study published in World Development in 2010 attests to the efficacy of this approach, showing an astounding 81% increase in savings over a mere 12 months among individuals who adopted automated saving strategies. Embracing these insights and strategies marks the beginning of a transformative journey towards financial enlightenment. It's time to transcend past excuses and embrace a future where self-control and wise financial decisions lead the way. By connecting deeply with our future selves, focusing on precise goals, and implementing safeguards against impulse spending, we unlock the door to a more secure and fulfilling financial future. Final summary. At the heart of modern life lies a simple truth. Whether for the basic necessities or the lavish indulgences, everything has its price. Yet, the journey toward fulfilling these needs is often marred by financial pitfalls. The challenge of making sound financial decisions is a universal struggle, one compounded by the absence of a straightforward guide to managing our finances. This odyssey through the world of spending is fraught with deceptive value cues and perplexing choices, leaving us to navigate a complex marketplace without a clear compass. 
The landscape of personal finance is not just about numbers and transactions. It's deeply intertwined with our behavior and psychology. Misjudging the true worth of goods and services, succumbing to clever marketing tactics, and falling prey to our own biases can derail even the best financial plans. However, the quest for financial stability need not be a Sisyphean task. By embracing our human tendencies and understanding the psychological underpinnings of our spending habits, we can chart a course towards smarter financial decisions. The key to navigating this journey lies not in battling our nature, but in harnessing it. Recognizing our blind spots, be they an over-reliance on misleading cues or a failure to appreciate the value of saving, allows us to adopt strategies that safeguard against impulsive decisions. From establishing emotional connections with our future selves to implementing systems like Ulysses contracts, we can create guardrails that guide us toward our financial goals. In essence, the path to financial wisdom is one of self-awareness and strategic planning. It's about creating a blueprint that factors in our imperfections and equips us with the tools to overcome them. As we confront the myriad challenges of managing money, let us remember that the ultimate goal is not just to avoid financial missteps, but to build a foundation for lasting security and prosperity. By acknowledging our vulnerabilities and proactively addressing them, we step closer to a future where our financial decisions are not just reactions to the market's whims, but reflections of our deeper values and aspirations. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.